since the first item on the agenda is a review of the tango and the art show, we need to wait for someone else who was there. Although Will could give, if Will is here, which I think he may be, um, he could give some feedback on the tango thing, but, and you, of course, Zachary, if you have any comments about how we could do things differently, that's useful, but otherwise, or in addition, we should wait to see if someone else comes. Oh, yeah. Definitely, I'm still waiting. Okay, so Gail is here and I, I think Rita's joining. So we'll just hopefully wait for Rita. Hi, Gail. Oh, you're muted, but we'll wave. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Hi, Zachary, how are you? Pretty good, how are you, Gail? You know, Doing at least, well. at least that, yeah, Zachary and Peggy's here too. I think for this, point unless there are a whole lot more people that show up we could just unmute everybody and see I okay do, do you want me to unmute, you, do you want me to mute brenda as well or just uh the main members? yeah you might as well i don't know if she wants to contribute i don't know but um peggy and rita and we'll see who else comes we have um our public member emailed me marissa so maybe mm -hmm. she'll be joining and she was at um the art show so Margarita, I might have to jump off for a few minutes. I apologize, but there's been a little emergency here. So I'll, I'll be around as much as I can, but forgive me if I have to exit for a few minutes. No issue. I hope things are okay. Thank you. But thank you for joining. <laughs> okay, so we'll just wait another minute or so, and then we'll get started. I'm just gonna see if Rita emailed again. I think you sent her the information I did as well, so. And she called, so oh. I talked to her too, so. Okay. I know so. she's wanting to join. I just want to be courteous because she's oh, sure. I think it's every just every minute. A, a minute after five or something. 502. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. I know, but we have to be done at six precisely. Oh, here's and here's Rita. So okay. okay. So I think we could we could get started. Okay. Hi everyone. Welcome to the July of the Arts Committee of Community Board 8. I'm Alita Camp. I'm the chair of the committee and I welcome you all. I wanted to start off with a review of the um, art show and tango event that were held in June and, uh, and then to move into talking about next plans. But I first would like to thank uh, Zachary and Will from the board office for all of their help. We couldn't have done it without you guys um, bringing the flyers over, making the flyers, um, helping get everyone, the janitor and the other staff at Wagner for the tango, all of that was really critical, all of your work, which I know I'm not listing it all now. So I just wanted to publicly say thank you and also to say thank you particularly to Gail and Peggy and Rita for helping and being there. Feet on the ground um, made mm -hmm. such a difference for both events. So I, this is certainly, a village working to create and put on and present these art shows and of course without the community and the participants so having said all of that let's start with um a, i guess feedback loop on the 
art show, what we did that was good, anything that could be done better, next steps, next shows, potential dates or time frames. So, um, and here, and Marissa is the um, public member as well. So she doesn't seem to have audio, but maybe she's connecting. So um, I think Zachary, everyone could be unmuted and people could just jump in. If it gets chaotic, we'll go back to muting. But in the meantime, if there's any um, comments, and I just ask for courtesy since you are all unmuted, if someone's speaking to just wait and, and not interrupt. And we'll need to stop this in time to talk about next, uh, next plans because we do need to be done by six so that the board staff, Will and Zachary could get um, ready for the uh, 6.30 Committee on Voting Rights meeting. Okay, so having said all of that, who wants to jump in with any feedback or comments about the art show or the tango show for that matter? And I've got my pen and paper ready. Oh, I just want to say if you're if you mute yourself, usually you know you'll say muted. But in this in this uh, meeting, you can unmute yourself at your will. So oh, thank you. You know, so yeah. Hi, I'm unmuted and I have a lot to say. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, Rita, and then Peggy. And I will be, you know, fairly succinct. I think the art show was a huge, huge success. So much so that there was a young man in my building who said, could I be in it next year? And he works in the building. And I said, yes, why didn't you participate? He said, I didn't print out my drawings. And he showed them to me. They're absolutely beautiful line drawings. And I said, you know, Manny, I will help you uh, get them printed even if we have to go to management to do so because management has been very very good uh and i wrote them and i tell them how good they are and i told them how good the uh how cooperative the um gardening crew was and it was just a win-win two other people have stopped me and said when is the next show so therefore we know that a we have a success. Fast forward to Tango Night. A lot of lessons were learned. It was a very lovely night. It was not well attended. And you have to excuse me for using um, descriptive I thought it was more like in a prison yard. You know, people couldn't see in and we couldn't see out. And Peggy and I attended the Muslim volunteers uh, show that they had of dancing and music in, the, in Rupert Park. And it was really a confined area, everybody, the place was jumping. So what we need, what, what I have learned, and I would like to share this with you is one, that it has to be visible to the public as they're walking by, because more than likely they haven't planned it. The music has to be sensational. The also dancing does not require a partner because a lot of people, they just don't have a partner to bring. If we want volume, it has to be uh, a dance with, uh, out of, that works without a partner. And the music, the music has to be really fantastic. So that's, that's all I, I mean, it, it was nice to learn from somebody else what they did and uh, we're on the right track. I think we, we can use James Cagney Place. It was the perfect place for people walking by. And uh, also they didn't, I think they started at either six, they started at seven o'clock. And I think that, that a lot of people who were coming home from work or just giving up their work at home. So that's it. 
those are good points. Um, with respect to James Cagney place for dancing, what Rebecca, the instructor's comment was, because it's brick and there's a lot of mortar in a very small space that people's feet could get stuck, it makes it harder to move smoothly. But we could certainly consider it and look at it for the other dance programs that we have and see what other instructors have to say. Um, I. If we had had a large crowd, then the space at Wagner would have been perfect because it would have it would have held a lot of people. But I but I see your points and I appreciate all of that. It, uh, I also sorry, pay, uh, sorry, Rita. There is no concrete in between the bricks. It is sand. It but is the sand. problem is the joints between the bricks. It's not a completely smooth surface. Right. But and that was what raised questions. It may not be an issue and someone should certainly look at it, but because I have no idea. And but I want you to okay. know, I think that the ice cream was perfect. Good. Um, I just also want to say before we get to Peggy that the borough president, Mark Levine, came and he spoke at the art show. And what he said was it was great. And he looks forward to seeing it every year. So while I'm hopeful we could do it more frequently than once a year, it's nice to know that we have the borough president's enthusiastic support for continuing with this, because I think that's that's really valuable. Um, Peggy. Hi. Yeah, thanks. So um, I thought the art show was particularly effective. Um, the highlight seemed to actually be the, the um, high school singers. So we should put that back on the list for next time if we can. Um, and it really added zest to it. Um, I thought that the show should have ended at four. By four o'clock, it was really quite clear that everybody was exhausted and there was hardly anybody around. And uh, we kind of started cleaning up anyway um, around then. Um, but the big issue, I think, for all of our events, it, and I, I think it's something that we need to, you know, talk to Zachary and so forth, is there appears to be, um, I don't want to say disconnect, but um, our needs are kind of not being met till the last minute in terms of who's doing what and who's going to provide what and all this scurrying around and who knows where we'll get the this or the that and the, we have to plan with the board office much further in advance um, and nail down who's doing what because there was so much panic around the art show that um, I think we, we, can, we can avoid. And um, so that's what I would like to see is before our next events, a real dialogue with the board office about who's doing what, when, how, you know, where, <laughs> Um, all this stuff, and then so that we would know what we have to do um, um, to, to make things run more smoothly. The one other thing that I would say is in terms of dance, some of the feedback I got was that people don't tangle that much. Um, they're very excited about the idea of salsa dancing. And um, I think that might have tracked a bigger crowd. And it's also pretty important that we do it in a more of an open space area. But um, um, in general, I think salsa would be a, a, a bigger draw. That, and, that may uh, be. I think it's nice to have a variety and certainly I'm looking forward to salsa if I could get my hips to disconnect from the rest of me. But um, I, think, uh, I think that should be fun and whatever, the public is interested in is certainly something that we should pursue. I just wanted to comment though about the time frame because my recollection was that people packed up at four because it was starting to rain. Mm 
and that, or even as, as soon as a quarter to four. And because even people left, a couple left at one and they said that it was because the weather forecasters said it was going to rain at one, which it didn't, but they wanted to pack up because they believed the forecasters. So I think that was what the issue was. There were some drops starting at around a quarter to four. It ended up not really raining, but maybe raining enough to uh, make artists uncomfortable because of their works on paper. So- Yeah, and in terms of the trucks, um, um, that big food truck parked itself right in front of the entrance to the art show. So you could not see the art show from the street. Um, I just personally, I don't like that. And I don't think that should happen. That's just my view. Uh, I think it's fine to have a little ice cream, you know, nook somewhere, but I don't see having these big food trucks, especially if they're going to park right where we need to be seen by the public. Okay. So that's it. <laughs> that's good. No, I appreciate that. Well taken comments. Thank you, Gail. Well, I think the show was really very successful. One of the things that I did was I introduced myself to each of the artists and I asked them how they felt about the show as it was moving forward. Would they be interested in returning next year? And I think almost every artist was very interested. And the one guy who was showing modern art was concerned because he didn't find as young a group of folks kind of walking through. And he said, well, maybe when I come back next year, I'll have a different, uh, my, some of my other portfolio. So I think that that was really very good. I agree with Peggy purely. I think the office was extremely helpful, did a, a really good job, but I think it's more a matter of timing and spelling out roles and responsibilities because that way we all know who's responsible for what. And I think that sometimes if one of us is assigned as a committee member to follow up on something also, then we're the one and it's in our belly with, we know what we're gonna do because of the last minute it was, will we have tables? Should we have easels? Can we get easels from the high school? And then having to pick them up and make sure that you could get them uh, to the venue quickly enough. So I think that that's, it's more, I believe that we're on a learning curve because it was only the second event and people obviously liked it. I think James Cagney Way was the perfect venue. I think that Rita, you were outstanding with everything that, that you took care of that really made it flawless. And a lot of that was your fine assistant. So I think that that really helped. I think that Peggy's always got great ideas and Alita works hard. So I think we've got a good committee and that what we should do is I'm not sure that we should have a second indoor show, particularly given everything that's happening with Omicron at this point in time and not really knowing if there are gonna be other variants or what have you. And even though we wanna do the show again, I think having, it's like Greenwich Village and Washington Square Park, you know when the show takes place. And if we can pick the particular weekend, if it works, if it's the second weekend in June, whatever. And that becomes when we have the art show. I think that then we start to brand it. And one of the other things was trying to figure out how we can, maybe we can get a PR firm to work with us pro bono to, that has a lot of media outlets that could help to promote. Because I think even though we had a great attendance, I think if more people knew about it, that uh, they would definitely come. I think music is amazing and important because when you hear singers, you hear a great quartet, whatever, which didn't probably permeate as loudly as obviously the singers would. But that also draws, it's like the Pied Piper. It draws people into the space. But on balance, I think we should continue to do it and just kind of work um, with the deliverables a little farther in advance. So there's no pressure on the committee and there's no pressure on the office either. Uh, as far as uh, the tango, I think that part of the problem really was the venue in the sense that we also did have a large sign. And you know, when I first got there, so there was some type of sign, I guess, on the door saying that you had to go around the block, but on the invite, 
it had the um, the main entrance rather than the schoolyard entrance. So people might have gone there and not everybody saying, well, gee, maybe I made a mistake. So they didn't necessarily go in. And um, when you got to the courtyard fencing, there was no <clears throat> people were trying to we were calling people if we saw them walk by to try to get them to come in. But I think if there was a large sign uh, Tango lessons, everyone welcome, enter here, that we might have gotten a few people off of the street. We may not have, but I think we have to figure out how to promote it also. I do have the name of somebody who gives salsa lessons that I'm going to reach out to. And I want you to find out is how much do we pay the instructor? What it, what has our uh, the cost been? So that if we speak to somebody and they say, what is the gratuity and you don't know, you know, I, before I call, I want to kind of have that information. Um, and there were people who actually stopped at the entrance to the schoolyard, but mm -hmm. they were not wanting to come in. Maybe they were shy. Maybe it wasn't as enticing, but they were intrigued enough to look and to stand for a few minutes. So we'll see. It is a learning curve. We haven't done the dance before. And uh, you're right about publicity. So we'll try to see what we could get interest from Patch, interest from our town, interest from uh, the elected officials. I know that we send out the flyers and they post them in their newsletters. But um, if we could get, we got a mention from the art show, I think it marked by Mark Levine um, in something he was sending out. If we could continue to do that, that might be able to help bring uh, people by. Um, okay. And also and Alita community groups. I mean, I think that groups. I also send it to the bids and to Carnegie Hill neighbors. Okay. So, uh, okay. so yeah, I know we need we need, and I post it. I spent hours posting flyers for the art show and for the uh, the tango show. I know we had um, Tali Siegel, who's Romney's sister, posting for the art show, and Marissa was working um, on the uh, on the tango show as well. So, um, so we do try and post flyers too. Uh, to get uh, the public walking by, focusing on, well, every walk. Um, okay, and I know we have um, Kathleen. Yes, um, I'm actually the public. I guess there must be one or more of us here. I live at 91st and 3rd, which is, of course, near James Cagney Way. Tell me when the art show was, what day, and uh, where it was. I gather it was on James Cagney Way, but when was it? It was June 10th. Um, no, I'm sorry, it was June 11th, the Saturday, June 11th. Okay, um, if it's the show that I, I did go to an art show on James Cagney Way, um, most of the the area seemed to be, I, I was, maybe I was early or something like that. Most of the area seemed to be deserted and they sort of the bottom, maybe third of the street had arts there. Um, there, there was a band as opposed to anybody singing. Um, what do I want to say? I'm not very tactful. Um, I didn't see anything that I would want to buy. Well, it's that we can't help. There were a variety of artists and we had crafts people. We had someone mm -hmm. um, making uh, tote bags and other bags out of jeans and, and beautiful fabrics. We had pottery mm -hmm. and paper products and all different kinds of artwork. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't buy anything, we hope that you enjoyed your time out there at the art show. We had a variety of music. So in the morning, we had a string quartet playing Gershwin and Broadway tunes. And one of the musicians actually is in company now playing at, co at the play company. So they're big shot from my point of view, musicians. And we had students from Julia Richmond Education Complex from the musical theater major in uh, um, Talent and Limited High School, which is an audition only school. They came and they had so much energy and so much enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. They really drew a crowd. So I spoke to their instructor, uh, conductor, I don't know what you call someone who leads a choir, about doing something with, with that group in the fall um, for an hour or two hours on, uh, on a Saturday, maybe, because they did draw so much public attention. And then, um, and then in the afternoon, we had a jazz trio, except that when it started raining, they had to pack up their instruments. So we try and present a variety of music. Last year, J-Rec came, but it was 
it was the choir. So they, it was a different kind of performance, but musical theater, they perform numbers from a chorus line and from Shrek. So that generates a lot of, um, a lot of interest because the music is so upbeat. I just, I don't remember most of the things you're talking about. I sort of looked at it and said, um, no, sort of amateur hour is what it looked like, which is a nasty thing to say, but I don't remember all of the, anyway, this it's is just one member of the... More amateurs than professionals, although sometimes they also show in galleries, but mm -hmm. you know what? It's a community event designed to support yeah. artists on the Upper East Side and designed to bring art to the public who might not otherwise go to museums. Last year, we had some artists from NYCHA that sold some works much to their mm -hmm. surprise and their incredible delight. Mm -hmm. So I think that also suits our purposes of, of being a community board, which is a mm -hmm. lo the most local government agency. So I hope you will come back for our next art show. And, and even if you maybe you'll like something and if not, then uh, you'll at least enjoy your time at the show and enjoy the music. The, the two words that got to me are community events. So that I would go to. So Yes, it's yeah. a community event. It's put on by the Community Board 8, which is the most local government agency. Mm -hmm. And Community Board 8 covers where exactly where you live. Mm -hmm. It runs from 59th to 96th Street from Central Park to the East River and includes Roosevelt Island. So um, it's a, it's for the community and it's put on by the government. And um, last we had more artists this year. So we hope that next year we'll have even more and it will be something really enriching for the artists as well as the community. But I'm glad that you were there because that's okay, the purpose to get people who live or work around us. I'm just accidentally here, so I'm surprised that you're talking about someplace I'd actually been. So I thought, <laughs> wow, I wonder if that was, and it is. So thank you so much. Oh, no, you're welcome. Thank you for joining this meeting. Um, Rita, you have your hand up again. Kathleen, uh, I, I live down the hill from you. The reason that the top of the hill was empty is that uh, we didn't have any more artists. As many artists come, that's how we set up the tables. It's not, uh, and don't forget, we have a whole bike rack on one side of James Cagney Place, the city bike, so that that part, that part of the street is not usable. So I want you to know, it, it's not that we prefer the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill. It's why that happens. The one thing that I have learned, I think more so from Tango uh, and from the Muslim volunteers was that music that people can hear as they're walking by is a great magnet to coming and participating. Peggy, do you, would you agree with that? I mean, Peggy and yeah. I yeah, I, I think that's, um, it's sort of essential because since we are an outdoor venue that people so far hadn't been that familiar with. We just started the show, what, two, three years ago. And so the music helps to draw attention. And as we do this more and more, it'll become more familiar to the neighborhood. Um, but I think music has been a um, an key ingredient to um, get us know our committee known and draw attention so far. So, and yeah, no, mu music is definitely uh, essential. And the artists like to be near each other too. They can set up where they want to and they set up very close to each other. So I think there's a synergy in that. So people don't look up and say, oh, that's 20 feet away. I'm not gonna bother. They just, because it's, it is a hill. Uh, and so that everyone is close by. And it, I think there's an energy that derives from that. But I appreciate your comments too, Kathleen. So thank you. Um, Rita? One more thing. I think that we need to investigate a proper sound uh, equipment uh, for especially the uh, JREC. Uh, they, they were fabulous. We had- Hi there. Two microphones. Gail, Gail, uh, could you mute yourself? Okay, go ahead, Rita. I think we need to look at our at 
the possibilities of us now that we know what they need. Uh, the music, you know, was from someone's uh, computer and some of the people did not hear the singers who were even just at the bottom of the hill because the, the, it wasn't loud enough. We well, have to, uh, we have to we're trying to figure out the, at the very last minute, as I know you know, Rita, because you were involved in all of those conversations, exactly what sound equipment was needed. So again, it's a, it's a kind of a work in progress and each, each um, musical uh, division of Talented Unlimited seems to have different needs, but we'll figure it out and, and we'll right. get there. But yes, um, certainly sound. And we're just learning as we go, but um, all of that, all of that makes sense. Peggy? Oh, and then we have to turn to what's next because we have limited time. Peggy? Yeah, just a quick comment. So um, I think it's great. Zachary's here. And um, I was wondering if we could just sort of get a better handle on for a quick second, what, how we can work this all with the board office. Um, what would, what should we do that would make things kind of run smoothly? Should, Zachary, do you think that we should um, meet with you two weeks before our next event and just hammer out who does what? I mean, I, I think it'd be great to operationally define how we deal with the board office now, if possible, um, so that we could have things go really smoothly. Um, um, Peggy, I'd like to suggest if we could have maybe a Zoom another time, not as a, just in terms of setting up like procedures of working with the board because we really, they have to leave at six o'clock. Maybe if there's a time at the end, but I'd like to try and get a sense of what we can do and when for planning purposes, while we have some people from the public and we're all here and then we could talk to the office um, at another time, if that's all right, because they do have to leave at six o'clock precisely. Um, so I'd like to then turn to, unless there's any closing comment on this, but, uh, but all of your comments, I'm writing them down, they'll go in the minutes, um, they all make sense because what we're trying to do is get the, the, the greatest number of artists, get good artists that, uh, that the public will appreciate. And, um, oh, and that artist, I think that you spoke to Gail about the modern art versus his landscapes. He sent me a list of suggestions. I invited him, yeah. he, had, he had them. I said, send me an email and he took me up on that. So um, anyway, we, um, the, and the idea is to bring in as many members of the public and entice them with, uh, with music, with art, with ice cream as it is. So, um, okay. So then let's just turn to what, what's next. Um, Gail, you said you're going to look into salsa and you also said something about the, Lin the Lindy Hop, if I've got Correct. that right. East Coast Swing, West Coast Swing, I guess. Mm -hmm. So let's see what their availability, availability is. We can, um, we, we don't have to separate it by months either. We could do something in the, maybe after Labor Day and then again at the, towards the end of the month. Uh, there are Jewish holidays in there someplace or in the beginning of October so that before the weather gets too cold, we can do something like that. It's harder to dance in coats than it is in, um, than it is to be an artist or a public member looking at an art show. Uh, so you'll, you'll talk to, to the potential instructors about those. Right. Okay. And if you could, if I may suggest just getting a time frame of what their availability might be like. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Okay, great. And, and then you'll get back to me to let me know what the compensation will be. Yes, I will. And yeah. then um, I'll talk to JREC and the musical theater to see if they're interested in doing something for an afternoon or part of an afternoon in the fall. I don't know if they, if they uh, perform on Sundays, but we could see. And it does get dark earlier by the time we're talking about September. So all of that, I'll find out if they're interested in what their availability might be like. Um, Rita, do you have a comment? Your hands up, or is that a leftover? Oh, no, 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 no. I just didn't lower my hand. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay, so we have those two. 
Uh, we had been talking vaguely, and I agree about indoor art shows, uh, given given that there is yet a new variant circulating in, in India, which is even more contagious than this one and about which they're a little worried. So given all of that, um, maybe an indoor thing isn't the way to go, but before it gets too cold, do you think we should do something in the fall? Maybe focus more on crafts because it does lead into Christmas. Well, um Personally, I think um, I'd like to see any kind of artists. Okay. I don't know why we'd want to limit it. Um, the reason, as I recall, that we got started with this to begin with was that the pandemic was on and we wanted to help artists generally. And so I think that's what we should do. Yeah, oh no, I wasn't suggesting crafts over art, but to also make it make it um, more about crafts in addition to the art. I think it's it seemed to feel more like we had we didn't focus on that at all the first time, the second time we did, but it wasn't as uh, as um, a heavy hand, not heavy handed, heavy hitting, I guess, reach, but it should be, I think, both because people like art and people like crafts and we've got the holidays coming up. So how late is too late to be outside? In the daytime. It can be cold in November. Probably October. Um, so I, think we have, I think we have to look at a calendar. It should be after school is open. And then there are the high Jewish holidays of, I don't know when they fall. I could look at, on a calendar. The end of September, beginning of October. Zachary, could you put a calendar up on the screen for, let's say, October? Yeah, sure. One second. Thank you. They do have lighting at James Cagney Place, so it's fairly well lit at night, if that's a consideration. That's a good point. It may be a little cold at night, yeah. but, but it is nice to do something. Huh. You know, the other thing that we, that you might want to consider is if you have one that is specifically crafts and almost like a, um, oh, what it is when people come, uh, a yard sale, you know, where they bring stuff that they want to sell that, that they had in their house or whatever it is. What is it? a flea market? Mm -hmm. if we did a flea market and crafts together. Um, I guess I really tilt toward wanting to make this all more as upscale as possible because we, we've been kind of pushing to attract better and better artists. Um, and to me, that would be the way to go. I mean, the Gracie Square Art Show, does its best to feature the best possible artists because it draws more people. Um, so I, I'd like us to be reaching out to the art schools or, you know, just really trying to find the best artistic talent we could. I, I did do that. I reached out to Marymount that has a visual, a strong visual arts program to Hunter College, um, which also has an arts program, I believe. So um, those schools, because they're on the Upper East Side, but we could expand our reach if, uh, if it makes sense to other art schools that are not located on the Upper East Side, such as the Art Students League. And um, I think either, is it Pratt or that school that's downtown, the new school, there are lots of art schools. Um, Zach, do you have a calendar with the holidays on it? By any chance, like I know Columbus Day would probably be the it's on the tenth. Yeah, um, give, just give me one more. But I don't know when the Jewish holidays are, or if there are any other holidays we need to be aware of in October. Bring one up real quick. And we could make a more concerted effort. 
Everybody. with at least maybe with the Y and their students, because they have jewelry making classes, they have pottery classes, they have all kinds of classes in specific areas of crafts um, and, and the teachers are good. So um, maybe that's also a way to attract people who come with skills. I'll reach out to JREC. Did I already say that and talk to them about it? Um, I guess we're, we're trying to find a date. It just occurred to me, I don't know if you would find this interesting or not, but I, for one, love to hear ghost stories around Halloween time. And I've been to readings of ghost stories at the Pell Mansion up in Pelham Bay Park in the Bronx, in Williamsburg, Virginia, they have ghost stories mm -hmm. at night. And I just, I find that that's really fun. If we could create kind of a semi-spooky atmosphere with pumpkins and, and I don't know how we, candles, but those kinds of things, sheets over mannequins um, and have different people reading short ghost stories. Maybe we would attract people to that if it's before Halloween. Any interest? I think ghost stories are a good thing for Hall Halloween. Right. Uh, I, you know, the call shirts art show is on East End Avenue and that's a little bit more upscale than what we uh, generally what we have between Second and Third Avenue, because we have such a new influx of young new people in this area, whereas on East End Avenue, those are more established people who have lived there for quite a while. In my building alone, there were over a hundred apartments that were empty last year and that are now being occupied literally at two at, a, two at a time during the day. And I can give you Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah starts on Sunday, September 25th. And then you have Yom Kippur on the 4th. Of October. Right. And Columbus Day is Monday the 10th. So that might be a long weekend where people go away. Camps have reunions. It's fall foliage time. So that might not be such a good weekend. Do you want to talk about maybe an art show on the 16th or the 23rd? I mean, the, the 15th or the 23rd? This is October? Yes. Oh. Um. I, I think the 15th it would probably be better the closer it is to, you know, warmer weather, <laughs> the, the better, I would say. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a good, I, I can't see. Um, it, now, I'm sorry, this is the art show? Yes. Okay. The Gracie, the Gracie Square Art Show is on September 10th. So this would be a little over a month after that. Um, Five weeks, I guess. And it's a little bit closer to the holidays, the December holidays. So people may be starting more with the cooler weather. September is still pretty warm, but the cooler weather, the leaves on the trees, the cider, to be thinking about Christmas gifts. So maybe, after, and it's not too cold and uncomfortable for the artists. And maybe we could find someone to sell cider or hot chocolate. So, um, so let's, let's tentatively think about October 15th, but Gail, let's also see when the dancing is because that's still not too horrible for outdoor dancing. And right. no, I'll reach out. Yeah, and then also with JREC. So we'll figure that all out and slide the dates together. Um, okay, and then do you want to, we could do ghost stories on the 29th around, um, it'll be getting dark pretty, early by then, not as early as December, but much earlier, although they won't have moved the clock back yet, I don't think. They do that in November now. Yeah. So maybe we could do ghost stories at dusk. We'll figure out what time that is, or just as it's really getting kind of dark. Or how, how does that sound? Or in the what venue, what venue would we use? We could use um, James Cagney Place. There are benches that people could sit. We could maybe have a music music in between or in advance or after that. Uh, maybe there's some kind of 
old in the public domain one act play. I don't know, we could do, we could figure out how to fill it out if that's what we want to do. One of the best things for ghost stories is to ask everybody to bring a flashlight. It does get darker earlier. And they're perfect when they're sort of dark, but when you illuminate upward on your face, it's very, it, it gives it the whole thing is very ghost-like and things like that. I, I, I think that's a terrific idea. I really, oh, um, I'm, I'm thinking, looking, to, I'm looking, oh, I'm looking I'm, for. Uh, since this is an arts committee, maybe something about costumes, you know, sure. an award for the most creative costume um, might appeal to kids. That goes uh, over so big, Peggy, that is uh, when James Cagney, uh, friends of James Cagney did that, the elected officials bring their children, whatever it is, and uh, I can get gift certificates for the winners in each category from Delizia Pizza. He does that every year, and I know he would do it again. So Yeah, he, that's, that's great. So, I want to make sure we're able to do that as a community board, but if we can, that's a really, really good idea. Um, maybe we could have a theme or, or not. I don't know. It's something that we could iron out the details. So let's talk about that. We'll figure out a time for October 29th. So it sounds like we're getting a pretty full fall schedule, which is good. Um, and... I don't know if there is anything that we could possibly do outdoors as we do get closer to the holidays without freezing people, but we could um, we could see if you have any ideas. I want to spend um, just a couple of minutes. I was reading, what was I reading about? Oh, so <laughs> it was an article in the Times about New Bedford, Massachusetts, and how they have, government has gotten grants for creating murals and doing other kinds of arts and culture in New Bedford, Massachusetts, because they want to be revitalized. So I'm wondering if there are grants available to community boards as a government agency. Is there someone who might like to look into that? Uh, what would the grant be for, just for covering uh, for, our expenses? We could um, work on murals. We could do hire musicians and do maybe an evening or a day of, of music. I mean, there were plenty of things that we could use money for. If we had access to money, we could hire a theater company and do an outdoor play. Um, there just are lots of things that we could do that we don't have the financial resources to do. do so we, um, do we have to be a 5013C in order to get well, money? That I don't know. And that's what intrigued me about the article about New Bedford was that it was a government entity that seemed to be getting and applying for grants. I don't know if there are local grants to New Bedford from the city that was going to a different city agency or if they were Massachusetts grants or private grants. I know that we would have issues going to, let's say, Chase Manhattan Bank and asking for a contribution because if they do business before the city, we can't really ask them for money. So that precludes, I think, a lot of entities that might be willing to give to a private arts organization. But there might be public public grants that just need to be looked into, if that's possible even. Yeah, I know, Peggy, I'm getting there. Okay, go, <laughs> Peggy. Borough President's Office. Okay. That's the place to go for money. If you try to go to a private foundation, they don't want to give the government money and they're going to perceive, rightly or wrongly, that this is government. But the Borough President is the perfect solution. Okay. Well, there might be other statewide types of um, arts grants. That's what I just don't know. Um, but I agree that giving money to the government, that's why I was just wondering about, about New Bedford. Um, okay. Well, the borough uh, president yeah. is really fond of our, our group and yes. our activities. Yes. Then I would think that this would not be a hard sell. Agree. Agree. Yeah. That sounds like a good plan. Okay, I will look into that. Um, 
And also, Alita, aren't we getting, or didn't we request some city council funds? For um, I think that, I don't know, Zachary, we did ask, I think, in the spring for discretionary funding from Keith Powers and Julie Menon. Do you know anything about where that might stand? Thanks for reminding me, Gail. Uh, that's more of a will question than for me, but I could certainly um, ask him. Okay. Um, okay. I'm making a note. Because that's the type of funding that city council members throughout the city tend to give to different groups. Absolutely. That's why we asked. So uh, exactly. So if we get that yeah, or we get something from the borough yeah. president, then we've got a little more funding. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if you if anything occurs about about the holiday time and, and New York is always so festive, something that we could do that ties into Thanksgiving or the December holidays without without um, any religious connotations, of course. Peggy? Yeah, so um, I think that we should do something that um, would then benefit the hospitals or children in hospitals or something. Some maybe it could be a um, a toy contest or or a, a gift making contest or wreath making contest or something like that that we could do that we could then bring to or someone could then bring to children in the hospital or anybody in the hospital or something. So maybe if we're, if we're focusing on bringing things to children, um, maybe we could make it family event um, and have children or, and parents and other adults doing something like that. Um, we could provide craft. I mean, that's something we could use money for is provide craft supplies to make. Um, I know we did something, uh, I'm trying to think, um, maybe, or, you know, art, I'm so sorry. Uh, maybe the art show in October could be our standard art show. And then right before Christmas, we could focus on crafts as gifts to give whoever in hospitals, children especially, but, and, you know, get uh, people to participate. Either we focus on children doing it for children or we can decide later how that would be, but um, so gifts that that kids could make or adults could make or something for people in the hospital. Yeah, where, I think that's great. Um, where would we have that? Well, it would have to probably be indoors, I yeah. think, for a mild day. And we it doesn't have to be a whole day the way the art show would be. It could be a focus of two or three hours of people staggering time, so in and out, and, and so that they're not there for long periods of time. And if we have lots of tables and people are really distanced, um, this, if we could do it, I'm thinking in your community room, Rita, it's a big space. And even though it's not connected outdoors, it's a very large space with, I think, pretty tall ceiling. So there's a sense of the air circulating mm -hmm. and people would feel comfortable. Uh, I do know that um, they require a deposit only for insurance, which is probably returned in case something, somebody trips on something or something that the building is not responsible. Can you find out details about what the deposit might be and yes, whether absolutely. it is required? Absolutely Thank do you. that. Okay, and I see um, Kathleen. Um, I just had a couple of parenthetical statements. Um, Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital is, as you probably know, up with Columbia Presbyterian. If you, um, I'm not, familiar with other children's hospitals. I don't know whether there would be wards. And the second part of this is when you mentioned New Bedford. New Bedford is a working class town. And maybe that's why they've gotten grants from bureaus. Who knows? But it's a you know seafaring working class near where the south coast of uh, Massachusetts. Right. With a lot of out of 
out of commission textile mills and a lot of a lot of working class but i can't begin to speculate all i know is that i read it in an article and it and it raised the question but they have become they have um really invested in the arts it sounds like and music jazz and have um really begun to revitalize itself and become a tourist destination which is a good way to to uh earn money for the budget um, but, but thank you thank you for that i didn't know about morgan stanley children's hospital um i know we have ronald mcdonald house right here mm -hmm. where families stay for kids who are sick so that's an avenue too um and, but we could figure that out as we get closer um well given that it's 553 I would, and I and I want to be as courteous to the board office as possible. To, uh, um, in light of everything, so what? Uh, any any other ideas or suggestions? I think we have a lot to follow up on right now. I think a jazz festival would be great. Come to think of it, well, it's also because at Goodwill I saw Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong and Porgy and Bess album which was really intriguing to me. In uh, July, the 92nd Street Y is giving a whole huge jazz festival all through July, just as a, another parenthetical statement. You know, that's good. They do, they do do a lot. And of course they have the funds. I saw Stephen Breyer over there a few years ago. So they have a lot more funding than we have. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I think we are able to attract people who are are notable or good we've had a variety of music so i think that's nice and we do always talk about doing a day or something with music um so that's something also and i don't know uh, gail i guess when you're looking into salsa and the did you say it's the east coast swing that uh, see if they're if they have if they use live music or if they you're muted I think it's West Coast Swing. West Coast, okay. Sorry, my phone. No, that's okay. So thank you. Um, maybe do they use live music or do they use recordings? And you know, I have to ask them, and some of them may not be willing to not have live music. Others may be just as pleased with um, with whatever it is that is pre-recorded. But I'll find out what they use. I'm so sorry. It just won't turn off. It's stuck. It's okay. I don't, um, hear, I don't hear it. Um, yeah. So I, I'm going to find out whether they're available, when they're available, how they set up their programs in general. With salsa, you know, you really can do it and learn the steps without a partner. With any type of Lindy or whatever, you have no choice. You you have to have somebody that you dance with. So that's another consideration, but we'll see. But younger, I don't know, younger people, are they into dancing today? You know, and how do we reach the right audience? You know, that's right. also, and that is something I would ask the, uh, the instructors. Right, I think there is a lot of inherent interest in salsa, so, um, so I think that would be good. And maybe if they do use live music and prefer live music, maybe we could find a local band that plays for swing. I'm not so sure, but, and also because live music does attract people in a way recordings don't, but they need to be able to work with the live music and we need to be able to get the live music. So I guess the first thing is information and then we'll see what, what our next steps are. Rita, you're muted. Uh, is in my daughter's office, and she works for the church, for the Episcopalian Church. They, every year, they adopt somebody. Uh, last year was making uh, blankets. They gave these specific uh, dimensions. They were quite small for uh, foundling children. That there are people in our community who really need a lot of things. And I wonder if there isn't one here, we're providing for the community, but would it be good to give back to the community if we asked our community to get together and told them what we needed? And if they came down and donated it to a place and everybody could see what they were donating and get a special certificate 
for their uh, contribution, that may be an idea heading toward the holiday. You know, the, the elected officials all do toy drives. So that's something we could, we could do, what well, we do, if we do do a craft creation thing for kids in hospitals, um, that would go along with the whole idea of the toy drives that they do. But we should talk further about your idea, Rita, and how to orchestrate this, because there seem to be a lot of different pieces involved in getting the community to create things who we donated to, all of that. But I think there are certainly a lot of really interesting and actually, for me, exciting ideas about what we're going to do in the fall. And I think uh, with the support of the elected officials and the support of the community, there's quite a lot that we could do that uh, and, it'll, and would benefit people in a lot of different ways. So I'm really excited by this. I appreciate everyone's participation and everyone's ideas. Thank you, Kathleen, for coming. Marissa is our new public member. Marissa, your camera's off, as I'm sure you know, but you can wave your virtual hand. Um, and thank you, everyone who's come. Uh, Brenda, thank you too. Zachary, Will, if you're there. And uh, we'll do another meeting, I think, in September when we could be more firm about specifics. And I'll get you the information where Gail will talk. So um, thank you. And for everyone coming to the zone, and not the zoning, but the voting meeting. See you later. Bye. 30 Bye. minutes. <laughs>